I'm Dr. Zachary Hickman. I'm assistant professor of neurosurgery at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai and director of the neurosurgery department at NYC Health and Hospitals Elmhurst. Hi, my name is Dr. Salazar Jones. I'm one of the neurosurgeons at Mount Sinai, primarily based at the Elmhurst Hospital Center. It's a trauma center in the borough of Queens. So the prognosis of a patient with a head injury really depends upon the severity of the head injury. Uh, I think a misconception is that patients that have a severe head injury are destined to not have a good outcome. Um, quite honestly, the, the, the outcome has improved for patients dramatically over the last few decades um, with advancements in pre-hospital care, um, with coordinated trauma systems, with emergency resuscitation, um, with trauma and neurocritical care and rehabilitation. And um, for instance, mortality for a patient with severe head injury has dropped from about 80% 100 years ago down into the 10 to 15% range presently. And for those patients that survive, there's a pretty significant chance that they can have a, a good functional outcome and return to a productive life if uh, the injury is not too diffuse and if they uh, obtain um, medical care rapidly and um, get to a place where there is uh, you know, a trauma team and a neurosurgery team that can take care of the patient rapidly. So there have been many advancements in trauma uh, care and in neurosurgical and neurotrauma care. I think uh, a lot of people feel like uh, maybe there haven't been large advancements because many clinical trials looking at uh, trying to find either a magic bullet um, or uh, some uh, advancement that is going to dramatically change the outcome for patients just by itself um, haven't really been fruitful. However, um, advancements have been made in small incremental stages and com all those things combined have dramatically improved uh, the chances of survival after a severe head injury as well as um, mild and moderate head injuries as well as the chances that you will recover um, over the long term from those injuries. This is absolutely not true. It's, it's a rather a misconception. It likely stems from our medical experience that younger patients do much better than older patients after a traumatic brain injury. This is true, and it's even truer when you include children into the comparison. However, you know, it doesn't mean that older patients can't have a good prognosis or can't do well after a traumatic brain injury. At the end of the day, your numerical age is not the end all be all. It, it is important to not have a negative or futility mindset. Uh, it's more important since patients over the age of 75 account from one fourth to one third of all hospitalizations related to traumatic brain injury. And as our population continues to age, these hospitalizations are only expected to increase. One particular type of injury that we do see in our older population is called a subdural hematoma. This is when a collection of blood is lying on the surface of the brain and it can put pressure on the brain or even compress the brain. Just in the last 10 years, there have been advances where this type of hematoma is being managed with minimally invasive procedures, some of which do not even require anesthesia. And in some instances, the hematoma can be managed just with medication. And there are different levels of treatments since there are different levels of traumatic brain injury. No patient's injury is identical to another's, and just like no patient's baseline health is exactly identical to another's. And I think it's important to have a caring, experienced team with a positive mindset that will examine all necessary factors to provide a comprehensive plan of care. And though older patients may take a bit longer to recover, we do see good outcomes every day in our hospital and in our clinics. In honor of March being Brain Injury Awareness Month, it's important for us to acknowledge and keep in mind that between two and three million Americans this year will sustain a traumatic brain injury. Just under half of those would be secondary to a fall. This can be a fall down the stairs or fall on uneven surfaces. So let's keep in mind to identify those types of fall risks, including you know, areas of the floor that are uneven or wet, such as in the bathroom. And as the weather improves and we become more active, let's remember to, you know, to wear our helmets with outdoor activities. Thank you.
In recognition of March being Brain Injury Awareness Month, I um, wanted to highlight that the vast majority of traumatic brain injuries are mild traumatic brain injuries, which includes concussions. And for um, you know adolescents and their parents, as well as you know young adults, um, as well as um, patients of all age ranges, to be aware that um, of, of concussions and mild head injuries, and that you don't need to have loss of consciousness. Um, you just need to have a transient uh, um, abnormality in, uh, in your, your kind of sensorium. So if you have a dizziness or, um, or imbalance or kind of fogginess after, after hitting your head, that's something that should be evaluated by a trained medical professional um, or your primary care doctor um, to make sure that you haven't had a head injury. Um, the other thing is most patients with mild traumatic brain injuries do very well and recover completely. So it's not something to be overly concerned about either, but just have a recognition that it can happen. As well, I'd like to, uh, you know, highlight the fact that um, each, people should be using helmets when they're playing contact sports or riding their bike. Um, they uh, save lives and help prevent more serious head injuries, as well as wearing your seatbelt when you're in a car or a taxi or in your Uber or your Lyft, um, regardless of the speed you're going or how far you're going, because Obviously, they save lives as well and prevent serious injuries both to the brain and the spine.